a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Heather Breesk Heather Breesk is an American business executive. She has served as the chief executive officer of Milan since 2012. She is the first woman to run a Fortune 500 pharmaceutical company. In 2015, she was listed as two in Fortune magazine's most powerful women list. Breesk is the daughter of former West Virginia governor and current U.S. Senator Joe Manchin. Breesk has been central to two controversies. A 2007 accusation of inflating her resume with an unearned MBA degree, and as the CEO of Milan during the controversy over pricing of the company's EpiPen products. Early life and education Brees grew up in Fairmont and Farmington, West Virginia in a Roman Catholic family of partial Italian and Czech descent. She is the daughter of Gail Canelli Manchin and Joe Manchin, who was a prominent politician throughout her childhood and is currently the senior United States Senator from West Virginia. Brees attended Fairmont Senior High School in Fairmont, West Virginia, and graduated from West Virginia University in 1991 with a bachelor's degree in political science and international relations. MBA Controversy In 2007, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reported that Breesk had claimed to have an MBA degree from West Virginia University, but the university disputed that. The university subsequently awarded her an MBA despite her having completed only 26 of the required 48 credits. Her father was governor of the state of West Virginia at the time. In the ensuing controversy, the university announced in April 2008 that it would rescind Breesk's degree. Michael Garrison, WVU president at the time, was reported to be a family friend and former business associate of Breesk, and a former consultant and lobbyist for Milan. After a faculty vote of no confidence, Garrison and several university officials subsequently resigned. Early work In 1992, Breesk started working as a clerk in a factory owned by Mylan, a generic drug company, and rose through the company to become the chief executive officer in 2012. At a WVU basketball game in 1992, Breesk's father mentioned his daughter's job search to Mylan CEO Milan Puska. The company soon thereafter offered her a low-level position in the quality control department of a factory in Morgantown, according to Breesk. She had misgivings about the offer. Her father said she should, absolutely take it, and try it for a year. She took his advice, and started as a clerk, typing labels. She received frequent promotions during the following years, working hard and learning the industry inside out. Government Relations and Advocacy From 2002 to 2005, Breesk served as Milan's Director of Government Relations. She contributed to the development of the Medicare Prescription Drug Improvement and Modernization Act of 2003, which created Medicare Part D a prescription drug benefit. In 2006 Breesk testified before the U.S. Senate Special Committee on Aging to lobby for changes to the law that would prevent pharmaceutical companies from raising challenges to the introduction of generic competitors by filing citizens' petitions with the FDA. And that would prevent pharma companies from undercutting the profits of generic drug companies by making deals for authorized generics to be introduced. When Mylan expanded internationally, Brisk noticed that Milan's US-based pharmaceutical manufacturing plant had full-time staff from the Food and Drug Administration devoted to it. Whereas facilities abroad had not been inspected by the FDA for more than a decade, 
Priest persuaded several of Milan's competitors to support what became the Generic Drug User Fee Act, which she proposed to lawmakers in 2010. Under the law the generics industry would pay the FDA fees of $300 million to get their drugs approved. And in return the FDA would inspect foreign drug manufacturing facilities at the same rate as US-based facilities something it had not been doing. Even though the entire pharmaceutical industry had begun to depend on foreign manufacturers for ingredients as well as finished products, to advocate for the new law, she made hundreds of visits to Washington DC sponsored a white paper, and used all the political skills she had learned from her father. The Generic Drug User Fee Act of 2012 was passed on July 9, 2012. and required FDA inspections of pharmaceutical manufacturing locations abroad if they are importing into the United States. Milan Executive Heather Briesk has served in several executive roles at Milan, such as Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategic Development, Head of North American Operations, Chief Operating Officer, and Chief Integration Officer. Briesk led the integration of Matrix Laboratories Limited and Merck as generics and specialty pharmaceutical businesses with Milan's operations. She was Chair of the Generic Pharmaceutical Association for two terms. Briesk was appointed president of Milan in 2009 and joined Milan's board of directors in March 2011. Briesk's appointment as chief executive officer was announced in 2011. And she officially took the position in January 2012. Briesk was the first female CEO of a large pharmaceutical business. At the time, she was one of 18 female CEOs of a Fortune 500 company. After seeing how few female candidates were available for positions that require a background in science and math, she became more interested in promoting math and science education among young girls. As CEO of Milan, Briesk continued advocating for more regulation of the pharmaceutical industry by the Food and Drug Administration. She was recognized in Esquire's 2011 Patriots of the Year list for her work pushing for the Food and Drug Administration Safety and Innovation Act. She was named one of Fortune magazine's 50 Most Powerful Women in Business in 2014. Also in 2014, Briesk and Milan announced a $5.3 billion acquisition of Abbott Laboratories as part of a corporate tax inversion plan to reorganize the company in the Netherlands and move its domicile to a country with lower taxes. Briesk said it was a difficult choice to make, but it had to be done to maintain competitiveness against pharmaceutical manufacturers that had already executed similar inversion strategies. The company completed the complex tax inversion in February 2015. The inversion, which formally resulted in the creation of a new company, Mylan NV with 78% of its shares held by former Mylan Incorporated shareholders, 
and 22% of its share held by Abbott Labs shareholders, was expected to immediately drop Milan's U.S. corporate tax rate to 21% in the first year, and into the high teens over the next three to five years. The New York Times said there was something disconcerting about a company that benefits from large government contracts renouncing their citizenship for tax benefits. In 2016 Milan's pricing of the EpiPen, used to treat anaphylaxis, became a focus of public anger. Milan had secured the rights to the nearly 50-year-old EpiPen as part of the Merck Gar deal in 2007. At that time annual sales were around $200 million. Breesk saw an opportunity to increase both the sales volume and the profit margin. The company launched a marketing campaign to increase awareness of the dangers of anaphylaxis for people with severe allergies that made the brand, EpiPen, as identified with its product as, Kleenex, is with facial tissue. The company also successfully lobbied the FDA to broaden the label to include risk of anaphylaxis and in parallel, successfully lobbied Congress to generate legislation making EpiPens available in schools and in public places like defibrillator czar and hired the same people that Medtronic had worked with on defibrillator legislation to do so. From 2007 to 2016, Mylan also increased the price of EpiPens by 461%, from around $100 for a package of two pens to around $600. By the first half of 2015, Mylan had an 85% market share of such devices in the US and in that year sales reached around $1.5 billion and accounted for 40% of Milan's profit. The price increase in 2016 was met with widespread, sometimes vitriolic, criticism of Breesk and Milan. Breesk explained at the 2016 Forbes Healthcare Summit that Milan's price increases were justified by the many improvements that the company made to the product. As a response to the controversy, Breesk led Milan to introduce a generic version of the device which sells for half the price of the brand name device. Proxy filings show that from 2007 to 2015, Breesk's compensation rose from $2,453,456 to $18,931,068, a 671% increase in pay. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?